Hi, I'm Tom Fuchs, the Senior Construction Manager for the Metro Flood Diversion Authority, ready to dish a little dirt about, well, dirt. Let's start with a brief trip back in time to remind ourselves of how the Red River Valley came to be. The geologic history of the valley doesn't go back millions of years like many other areas. Glaciers from the ice ages deposited dense layers referred to as till and outwash as they advanced like giant bulldozers through the region. It's only been about 9,300 years since the waters of Glacial Lake Agassiz drained and formed the valley, making it one of the youngest major landscapes in the contiguous United States, as well as one of the flattest surfaces on Earth. Although various soil formations were deposited by Lake Agassiz, most of our soil consists of soft, lake-deposited clay that extends to depths of 50 to over 150 feet down, at which point we encounter hard glacial till soils. This clay is divided into several individual geologic formations. The Chirac Formation, which is the last layer of sediment deposited from Lake Agassiz, comprises the top layer going down as much as 20 feet. Below the silty clay of the Chirac Formation lies oxidized Brenna, which is similar in appearance but grayer. Below these upper layers lies the Brenna and Argusville Formations, which have the consistency of wet Play-Doh, although it only comes in dark gray. The glacial till soils that are encumbered below the soft lake deposited clays typically consist of sandy clay containing various layers of silt and sand. The till exhibits significantly more strength than the upper clays and is typically the bearing layer for deep foundations such as driven pile. The glacial till also contains various amounts of gravel and boulders that were deposited as the glaciers slowly moved from north to south. The differences in strength and plasticity between the upper two layers of clay and the lower layers are notable. The liquid limit in the Brenna Formation is typically much higher than the Chirac, which is one of the characteristics that result in structurally weak soil. The Brenna's compressive strength, meaning the amount of weight the soil can bear before shear failing, is often half of what Chirac is in the area. In addition to the clay's weakness, its highly compressible nature makes it challenging to engineer large, permanent structures or tall soil embankments. Consolidation, which is the compression and reduction of pore space within soil, often dictates a structure's foundation design. Settlement related to the clay's consolidation occurs when a load, whether from a building or a pile of soil, is applied. In sandy soil, settlement occurs quickly upon loading and generally less overall. However, due to the plasticity and low permeability of clays, this consolidation of pore space occurs slowly and over a long period of time. Some designs allow as much as 100 years for this to occur. Given all this, what does it take to engineer permanent flood protection in the Red River Valley? Check out our Soil 201 video to find out.